Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Christopher Aaron. This is July 11th, 2018. Gold is at critical support, needless to say. It has been two weeks since the last update. Let us get right into it here on the channel. We are looking at gold and silver over the past three days, and we are looking first at the price of spot gold. Spot gold falling back once again to critical support. This is absolutely critical support. We will see this on the chart in just a moment um, here in the 1240 to 1245 range. An attempt to stabilize here in this range would keep the ballpark open for the higher resolution that we have been looking for to at least eclipse those 2016 highs. So we want to see this stabilization occurring now. When we switch over to look at silver, we are seeing silver be weaker than gold over the last several days, which is a negative in and of itself. When we see silver underperforming gold, it simply shows that interest in the precious metals from the speculative end of the community is not there at the moment. Uh, there are institutions and funds that are positioning, but they're doing so primarily in the gold market at this time. We're seeing the weakness in silver. Uh, critical support for silver coming in just about 15 cents lower than the present price. So both gold and silver are absolutely at critical supports. We will focus on gold because we are seeing the volume come into the gold market as opposed to the silver market. And we are expecting that gold will still lead this move both to the upside and to the downside. And therefore we should focus on gold with silver being a leveraged play on gold when the move higher finally happens. But until that time, we should focus on gold. The recovery structures that we are looking at, we'll put this in perspective on the, the present chart in just a moment. We're looking at the potential here for gold to have a recovery attempt similar to what it had from 1974 through 1978. The massive decline almost a 50% decline followed by the math simply works out to a 100% recovery uh, from the bear market lows. And we can see the structure of this recovery attempt was maintained. There was no violation of the linear trend line. And of course, when we're talking about linear versus parabolic, we're simply referring to what level the Y axis is at here. So we're seeing the linear attempt, which by the way, is the more conservative attempt. Markets can also, when they move in the parabolic attempt higher, this can happen even after a bottom. Uh, we can see that sometimes occurring as well, this being the more conservative attempt. So when we see the more conservative attempt hold, this can still result when we zoom this out, we look at how the breakout happened in 1978 above the $200 level the breakout, the retest several months later, we often see these retests and a 300% move higher from the previous all-time high. From the previous all-time high, not from the lows. But if you happen to be so unlucky as to buy at the previous all-time high, even you were rewarded here in the following 18 months uh, with this move higher in the gold market if the structure of a bottoming attempt is maintained. And we can look at examples throughout history where we see the same bottoming attempt. This is from 1983 through 1988, and we can see the failure here in 1988 at $440 an ounce. And we can see what happens when a market fails to maintain, once again, the linear structure being the more conservative end of the structure here, as opposed to a parabolic recovery attempt, but a linear structure when that fails, we can see what the result is. That trend line is very rarely regained. Here in the case of gold, this led to 12 more years of declining prices. Now notice, I'm not talking about a crash in the price of gold. It's not like when the structure of the bottoming process was maintained, it's not like the price of gold fell from 440 back down to 100. It did not crash, but it did not enter a bull market at any point in the next two decades once this more conservative linear structure was broken. So this is what we're looking at now. We bring it to the present. 
boy, uh, we're right there. We're right there. We're seeing some hints of weakness come in here. Nothing decisive yet to the downside. Uh, all I can say is if this trend line breaks, we will see a decisive uh, flush lower of stops that are being placed right here at the 1240 to 1245 region. We have not seen that yet. It's been relatively tame thus far, even despite the oversold reading that we're talking about here in the RSI momentum uh, index. So this structure still has the potential. As bad as it looks right now, the structure is still maintained at the present moment. We want to see this structure held so that the price can wind back up and make what will be since the 2015 bottom, the first, second, third, it will be the fourth major attempt if we see that. Of course, we can go back even further and look at the hits in 2013, 2014. This would be an absolutely beautiful base here, more or less a six year base, very similar to the 1970s structure, which could lead to a massive move higher. You've got to see those buyers stepping in right now. They must step in. If the buyers don't step in, this market will begin to crumble in front of our eyes and look more like that late 80s through early 2000s market. Now, keep this in mind just for one second, okay? Why would I be saying things like this? I just want to remind you of something. Me, personally, my investments will do better if the price goes higher. Uh, most of my subscribers would feel the same way. But I have built my reputation on speaking as close to the plain truth on what I observe in this market as possible. And it was very easy to speak that plain truth in late 2015. You can go back and look at the archives of this channel from August through December of 2015, and we were calling the potential for that bottom to set up, which did. It was very easy to speak the plain truth when we were seeing that bottoming attempt in 2015, and all we had to do was get invested and jump on. People liked to hear that. But what I'm telling you is I will speak the plain truth about what I see in this market, whether or not the signals tell me that it is moving higher or lower. And you may not like to hear that if I have to change the analysis as we are seeing it come into play. You may not like to hear that, but I would simply ask you to think through this clearly. What would you rather hear? Someone who tells you something you don't want to hear, but he's telling the truth, or someone who lies to your face for years and years and years? The difference between the fundamental based analysis and the technical based analysis that I focus on here, this is the best analogy that I use to try to explain it to people. Imagine that you live, just for a moment, in New Jersey. And imagine you live somewhere in the 1800s in the vicinity of Middletown, New Jersey. And you have a schedule of trains that are leaving from New York at 7.30 in the morning. And you're planning to go for a walk in the woods and eventually to cross the train tracks just after the train passes through your town at 9 a.m. in Middletown and you have your fundamental research, you have done your research, you have read the schedule, you have asked people, people are telling you, yes, the train passes through at nine, therefore, at 9.05, you are safe to cross the train tracks. That is your fundamental research. But you go for the walk in the woods, you get down to the train tracks, and you begin to cross, and what do you see? Imagine, if you see this coming at you. This is your technicals. This is your study of what actually is happening. Despite what all your research may tell you, what if there is a train coming at you at full speed at 9.05 in the morning when your fundamental research told you this should not be happening? What do you do then? Do you cling to the schedule and close your eyes and say, the fundamentals told me no train is here, so therefore I'm going to stay in the track. Of course not. Of course you don't do that. Of course you throw the fundamentals out 
and you align yourself with what is. What is occurring in the market that we are participating in? This is the study of the technicals. What is occurring is a critical trend test of the most conservative structure that this market could possibly take for us to consider this a bottoming attempt still unfolding. Please consider this analogy when you watch videos like this, when you watch other fundamental based videos. If this market does not work out in our favor, there are things that we can do to mitigate damage. In the premium service that I offer, which covers these topics and more, gold, silver, the mining sector, the US dollar, stock market, bond market, commodity index, and the companies that we are investing in here, we will also be focusing heavily on this topic over the next several weeks. And as we see this test coming into play, if this support fails, what will we do? And of course, the answer is going to be very different. If you are someone who is buying $100 or $200 uh, every month of silver as long-term savings that you don't plan to touch for another 5 or 10 or 20 years, very different scenario than if you are all in on leveraged products, including heavily invested in the mining sector, and we were to see support fail. Very different scenarios. Everyone has a different scenario here. But this is what we will be covering as we watch this support test play out. I do also work with individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So in the premium service, we will be covering various scenarios. I will be doing my best over the next several weeks to highlight various scenarios depending on which category investors may fall into. But if you would like to discuss your situation one-on-one -on -one with individual questions, please know that I work with individuals to give the best research that I am capable of. I do thank you for watching this video. This is an exciting time. Whether or not the market rounds up from the support test, as I believe it will over the short run, and we get that next attempt at 2016 highs, or whether or not the oncoming train is telling us something different from what we would hope. I do sincerely hope myself that you will take thorough notes of this time period. You will remember the voices that are trying to provide factual information versus trying to only speak uh, what they hope will happen. And take your own notes, do your own research, make your own charts at this time because markets repeat over and over and over again and we can learn so much about what to expect in the future from how this bottoming attempt unfolds.